What we have seen with regorafenib in the initial study, the correct uh, study, uh, a number of patients had hand foot toxicity, and I think that remains the major toxicity with the drug. Uh, there's also uh, diarrhea as well as hypertension. Um, those were the main toxicity associated with the drug. And when the drug was accepted and, and started to um, be used in clinical practice, the hand foot uh, toxicity was really the major um, limiting factor to patients being able to tolerate it and then eventually also to um, clinicians prescribing that as a first-line option in, in the third-line refractory setting. When patients are due to get started on a drug like regorafenib, uh, which admittedly is primarily approved and used in the later lines of therapy, uh, an approach to symptom management is critical. Uh, we have to make sure that patients not just are able to handle the pill, but that it's helping some of the side effects uh, that are induced by the cancer itself at that stage. So when we talk to patients about how to cope with this drug, we, we say we're gonna start you at a lower dose and, and escalate, and some of that we learned quite a bit about at this year's GI ASCO. Um, but we really do not feel that, uh, and many of us for a long time have not felt that dosing regorafenib at 160 milligrams is a tolerable strategy for, for many patients. 160 milligrams dose uh, had been our standard all the way through. Certainly uh, for some patients, for many patients, uh, it's a tough dose. And we find ourselves having to reduce the dose to 120 or occasionally even to 80 uh, with the majority of the patients. However, there's about 20% of patients who do tolerate the 160 milligrams very well and continue with it. And in my experience, I've had patients, and I do, I just saw one of my patients uh, uh, last month who's, who'd been, who had been on, on, on regorafenib 160 milligram for nine months, uh, doing very well with very minimal toxicities. So we have those patients, and we know from correct trial that those patients are about 20%. Um, now, Redos uh, redefines uh, the, uh, the way we optimize the dose and really takes advantage of the critical importance of that first cycle. Uh, as such, my strategy has shifted from 160 milligrams daily, three weeks on, one week off, now to a dose escalation strategy with the goal uh, to reach 160 milligrams, so 80, 120, 160 on a weekly basis and a week off. In our study, Redos, uh, we had, as I, as I mentioned, we had a second randomization, uh, which essentially included patients uh, being randomized to what we call a preemptive approach versus a reactive approach with a steroid cream, a clobetazole applied to hand and the feet. Uh, so far, we haven't seen any signals. Uh, we're still looking f the deep into the data to understand whether we truly could preempt hand and foot syndrome will present some of this data in later uh, uh, congresses. I think what the, the most important message remains the same. The first four weeks of exposure to regorafenib and to test one or two, but to regorafenib are critical. It's very important to follow the patients closely. With regorafenib, uh, we see the patient every week for the first cycle, and then after that, every two weeks for the second cycle. Then after that cycle, going into the third cycle, patients will be seen on a monthly basis. But it is critical to see the patients on a weekly basis. And now that we have, which I believe is a superior strategy with 80, 120, 160, uh, that will naturally happen. You will see the patient on a weekly basis. I would still see, see them, of course, before I start a cycle two, um, so the first cycle is going to be involved with the patient, see the patient on a weekly basis.